One day you're gonna chug a V, you're gonna chug a V and I'm gonna- You're gonna walk out. I'm gonna take off the headphones and be like, I'm out. Few moments later. I'm so triggered I don't even wanna carry on. Cool. Well, go on, people, it's your boy Venom in the building. Hey, hello, hi, it's your home slice, Dami Zay. Welcome boop, boop. to episode nine wow. of the Unpicked podcast. Every week we say wow, like we're not recording every week. I know. <laughs> do you know what it is? <laughs> because we just do it, I don't even pay attention to the numbers. So when you start, every time you say the number, I'm like, oh my God, it's nine, nine whole episodes. Like We're going to be on double digits next week. Can you believe mm-hmm. it? I can't wait. I can't wait for what we're like hundreds. Yeah, that's gonna be wild. Then I would have exposed my whole life. Yeah, <laughs> and triggered me a whole lot. Let's I know. Hope... Would you even st- would you even still be alive after being triggered a hundred times, <laughs> week after week after week? We have to wait and see. At this point, mm. we have to wait and see. I might leave, and it might just be <laughs> unpicked with Venom by himself. <laughs> you know. <laughs> One day, one day you're gonna trigger me. You're gonna trigger me, and I'm gonna take off. You're gonna walk out. I'm gonna take off the headphones and be like, "I'm out, live." (laughs) That would be mad. I'm not. I'm not trying to make it happen, but I would also appreciate the the value of seeing it. The entertainment. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that would be funny. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Terrible. I can't. Even better when you then edit it. You edit that one because I'm out. Oh, damn. <laughs> I just have to be really nice. Uh, can you send me the clip? <laughs> Thank you. That'll be our first late episode because I yeah, will boy. be taking my time sending you that clip. Oh, damn. <laughs> I'll be in trouble. That's so funny. Um, how are you doing anyway? How's your week been? Yeah, all good. Brand new year. We're in it now. We've, you know what I mean? Oh, we're, we're firmly in 2020. We're firmly here. 2022, damn. 2022. Yeah. I yeah, I think I'm used to it. But um, yeah, I'm good. It's been it's been uneventful, but in a good way. It's just been a calm step into 2022. I didn't go out for New Year's or anything like that. So mm. yeah, just calm. Mm. What about yourself? Um, It's been a calm one for me too. It's been a calm one for me too. I've mm. normally, um, before the new year, I've done my like goal setting. I've done like a re like cap of the previous year. What have I achieved? Stuff like that. Mm. I didn't do that. Yeah, me either. And it's weird because I always do it. So I'm actually still yet to. <laughs> recap on last year like just go over it and think about okay what did i achieve did i do what i said mm, i was, was mm. gonna do what do i want to carry over what do i want to do differently what goals do i want to set? i still need to do that do you know what yeah <laughs> i i do that a lot but last year someone asked me like you know how, how did you feel about last year and i was like yeah it was fantastic i was just saying it in jest mm. being optimistic and then I thought about it and I was like, no, nah, I did bare things last year. Like I, mm. I didn't document them properly, but I did loads. Mm. And I don't even necessarily think I actually planned all of them. In fact, I didn't. The best things I didn't plan. So that's the energy I'm trying to take forward. Like I'm just podcast, like, you know what? Didn't exactly. Plan it, but here we are. Didn't plan it, but we are here like and smashing it. So it's just one of the ones I'm like, you know what? If I just go with it, man, just enjoy it and just keep. It's just gonna keep happening if you know what I mean. Like, yeah, you plan, but plan, I'm gonna plan in the year. Oh, this is working. Let's let's do this. Yeah, yeah. What do I need more of? Let's do this. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know what, listeners, watchers, let us know in the comments how you started your new year. How did you cross over? How's the first couple of weeks been? What goals have you set? If you have set any, like, what's your vibe for this year? Um, hmm. Also, just quickly, want to say a huge welcome to our new subscribers and welcome back to our returners. We love you all so much. Um, Yeah, man. Just, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoy this Mm -hmm. episode. And uh, yeah, man, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So. All right. It can't be New Year if there isn't some sort of controversy. Mm-hmm. And um, 
you know, everybody is in God. Well, not everyone. People that were double vaccinated. I know. Fully not. I'm fully those, not there. Those but... that are double vaccinated are were in gala for New Year's Eve at least for mm-hmm. crossover. And um, there was some controversy with Shatawale and mm-hmm. Burner Boy. So and Olu basically, Shatawale accused um, Nigerian artists of not supporting the Ghana- Ghanaian music movement, right? And then I don't even know how he now decided to pick Burner Boy out of the crowd as the person he was going to go on a Twitter rant about. And he basically mm. said to Bernard, long of the short, you know what, yeah? You think you're a big man? Come to Ghana. Let's mm. let's do let's let's do a freestyle. Freestyle battle. rap battle. Like a <laughs> <eight> mile. <laughs> <laughs> because if people are rap artists that we people are doing pop. <laughs> anyway, so initially Bernard was like, um, I don't understand why you want to separate Ghana and Nigeria. Nigeria, like it's not what I'm about. I believe in African unity, basically. Mm-hmm. And you trying to do this separation thing is not. A, it's not my brand. Drop me out of it. Shatawele was going on and on and on and on. So Bernard obviously came out of brand. Came out of character. He did. I was about to say he definitely came oh, out yeah, of brand because then he started. <laughs> <laughs> he the giving. difference between the first response the f- and the last response, I was like. The is this the same conversation? Was, the first response was like, I'm not about this life. Drop yeah. me out. You know, I'm, I'm here unity. for the pan-Africanism. Yeah. I'm here for Africa as one nation. One you know, nation. we shouldn't be talking about the countries. Mm. Yada, yada. I was like, go on, Bernard. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. the response. By the second one, he was like, you are a rapist as well. <laughs> now. Not that I'm laughing at the rape. That's why I, I have no to idea what that short, story is. Because I know but... that I, I bust jokes too much. This is a serious Listen. matter. Mm. Both of them accuse each other of raping someone. Oh, but in the... I didn't see Shatawale ah! accuse him. Oh, Shatawale. I, I missed Shatawale that bit. started Okay, okay, He's okay, the first okay. one to call Bernard a rapist. Right, then Bernard okay. came back and said, my, my guy, oh boy, it's you that's the rapist. Now... That's mad. That is a mad conversation in and of itself. I just... What is concerning me is, first of all, I do think there's some sort of xenophobia against Nigerians because um, it could be because I'm Nigerian myself and I'm biased. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we Nigerians have this thing. We feel like everybody just don't like us. It's just hitting on They're us. Haters. Like, <sighs> I'm here, so I might as well carry on. Yeah. When, Azon- when the Ozonto movement was moving, mm. We Nigerians we even became a Zonto warriors and we are not we are, Ghanaian. We were, as, we were a Zonto and with you. You know? And mm. now there's a whole Ampiano movement. Mm. And uh, everywhere, everywhere, like, I'm pretty sure, like, from the videos I saw, from the Snapchats I saw, there was a lot of Ampiano being played in Ghana. Why mm. wasn't Shatawale going for South Africans? Why was it Nigerians? Mm. everyone's collabing with south african artists right now so what what is it why is it nigeria that you want to call out out of all the types of musicians that are there sorry mm. there is an ambulance in the background if you can hear that i can, I can, hear, can. It, I can hear it so i'm sure you lot can um but yeah carrying on um yeah it's like why did you pick out nigeria like what is the issue why is it always mm. us why is it always nigerians people want to pick out on like I mean, Nigeria is such a big and um, influential... Wow, why did I even say that like that? That was just not even trying to fall past my lips. My lips are too big. Influential. I needed a bit of moisture. Let me get something. But it was, yeah, Nigeria is an influential <laughs> nation within Africa. So I think a lot of the time people look to that driving force. In terms yeah. of West Africa, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Culturally, very influential. So it's just, it's just an easy... Not target, but it's just... It's going. It's going to pick up your focus, but I. I just don't know. You know what my beef is with that conversation because I didn't see the part where Shatawale was accusing Bernard of being a rapist. It's why now of all times is the this time is that we're now to, hearing these this stories. This is why I wanted to go on because <laughs> for me there was two issues there. There was the um, xenophobia against Nigeria, but then mm. there's also the rape thing, like. So it's because you lot are in beef that we're hearing that there's that now. That there's yeah, now, now you want to out of this. Rape. And it's not a small accusation to make either. Mm. So it's quite scary because mm. did you both rape someone? Is this normal in the 
in the yeah, industry. Yeah, in GH, like, is that, is that how they might well, go in down? The, maybe in the industry, or is it normal in the African, like, Afrobeat industry? Hip life industry, yeah, I, I and you lot no are just hush hush about it. But now that you're in beef, you're. It was just like, yeah, I know what you and your boy because, tried to. I was like, I mean, huh? Robert Kelly is in prison for such allegations. I mean, he did a lot. He but did what a I'm lot trying to, to the point there. I'm trying to make is that's how mm, big mm, that's mm. the gravity of this allegation is huge. It could finish. But then, but but it could. I mean, what Shata Wale said, is try. Shata Wale is is done anyway. No one. I mean, people still listen to Shata Wale. I still listen to him, but I listen to his old stuff. Mm. Um, he's not. I mean, this year, well, not this year. Twenty twenty one was a big year for Nigerian artists, right? Um, and so, Burner's at the height of his career at the moment. So, uh, a mm. allegation like this is yeah. Damaging. You can't just yeah. You can't just it don't just disappear, right? Or if there's anything to it, then it doesn't just disappear. But if it's just random twitter beef then yeah yeah it's just... scary why is it now that you lot are saying this um and it, it also makes me think oh so when you lot were a little bit cool you was all right to give each other the bly for such behavior yeah like, for, for, for these beefing, madnesses now you want to start saying mm. that someone so is a rapist men check your friends if you know your friends are moving a bit well where make sure you tell them like mm. don't do i'm gonna keep it and then when it's beef now you want to bring it out yeah, you can't be throwing that in into the fold of of um, Twitter beef or social any social beef, media beef. Any beef. That's not like that's not the level that that comes out. You, you start you talking about with oh, rapes, you had an affair or you blah blah right, blah. Or but even rape, you, you stole, but that's not that's not where you. <laughs> that is not where it should be going. You know, somebody raped somebody and you stay quiet. Yeah, I mean, it has it has to. Yeah, wow, that's that's it, that's proper weird. But I only saw it one way. So I was just thinking, but Berna, if you knew that him and his boy tried to move mad like that, why? To a girl that you now? brought to Ghana, because Berna yeah, said you brought the girl to Ghana. But then he said tried. So it's just like, okay, so nothing happened, but whatever, maybe you've spoken. He said I don't tried, know, it's but just still weird. called him a rapist. It's just a bit, I don't yeah, care. Yeah, like, even if you lot. try, if I knew mm. that if I was somewhere... And I and I saw, witnessed, or knew that someone had tried to rape someone I knew. You think I'm gonna stay quiet about that until there's beef? Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna say something. I will embarrass you. Sorry, no, I'm not sorry. I will embarrass you. <laughs> it's not. It's not something to keep quiet about. Sorry, not saying? sorry. No, it's not. It's really not. Yeah. And um. Yeah, I mean that's all we can say about that. Really, that's without all we can say about that. B- without knowing more, that's all we can that's say. All we can say. There was a clip. Of a beautiful young lady called Grace Adjolore. Yes. Adjolore. Um, <laughs> basically saying that men from the UK are bottom tier. And men from the US and, and, and Nigeria, Ghana, wherever else are elite. Because they'll spend money on you even if they're going to cheat on you. Techie, isn't it? Essentially, that's what she said. Mm-hmm. How you feel about that? I've, pfft, I got bare different opinions, but... I weren't feeling it, mainly because it's different UK, for them, man. You're a UK lad. I'm a UK. I'm a UK don. Yeah, and I don't <laughs> take kindly to these women exercising <laughs> these kind of opinions of us, man. Yeah, <laughs> salty. And I just thought to myself, Nah, do you know what it is? I just, I just looked at her saying this, and I said, Yeah, but I haven't got money to waste. Like, I don't. Hello. I don't. <laughs> and I, oh, <laughs> like, them man can splash because to me I'm like, okay, yeah, them man splashing, splashing on her, but is she still single? Yeah, so they wasted their money, in my opinion, in my personal opinion. But you do realize that these men that spend money, they spend the money in the hopes to get something in return, not relationship. No, per no, se. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get that. So I get it could that. be other things that. Listen, let me t- let me keep it very real with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know men. Okay, let me not lie. I don't know them personally, but <laughs> I've heard of situations where yeah. married men just mm. want to be able to take someone on a date. They just like the idea. Not even just married men. Like a lot of these older African men like mm. being seen with beautiful women. That's what I don't even like. think that's exclusive to African men. You know. Okay. But, sorry. Thank you. 
that helps my point. Mm-hmm. Men like to be seen with beautiful women. And some of them are willing sure. to, to spend money for that. So they're willing to, okay, I'll buy you a nice bag. I will buy you Balenciagas, Giuseppe's, mm-hmm. Chanel, whatever you want, right? Just come on a date with me. I just want to be seen with you outside. But then you in this example, you said like, you know, or you alluded to older men. Do you think she's talking about older men? Because in her clip, I got that she was, it felt like she was just talking about man's the same age. Okay. If you know okay. I mean. So I've, I watched the whole podcast. 90s Baby mm-hmm. Show is my favorite podcast. I love them so much. Um, I watched the full episode. Okay. And the context was, around cheating which is fitting because our last episode was about cheating go watch that um and what grace was saying was being cheated on by a guy in the uk mm-hmm. is is peak is techie because he's gonna break your heart but you're not gonna get anything in return like you at least if an american man or a nigerian man cheats on you at least they gave you money or they spent some, they bought you something so you've got something you know to kind of like okay i got i was heartbroken but i got something out of it whereas uk guys they're not spending anything on you they're not going to buy you these things so and they're just going to cheat on you for free basically right i mean this this and, new generation is different and um <laughs> the guys on the show were like well we're winning isn't it which i totally get that perspective because if i was a uk guy and someone said to me you take advantage of us without giving us mm. anything i'd be like yeah that means ugh, we're the kings of the game then isn't it because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what i mean i mean that's how i saw it yeah, but, yeah exactly yeah. but i'm not a man i'm a woman and <laughs> uh, <laughs> i i kind of get where she's coming from i kind of get where she's coming from like okay i don't believe in men or women having to buy someone's attention mm-hmm. with materialistic things um but if a man was like, I want to give you 20 Gs, I'm not going to say no. Mm-hmm. Of do you course know what not. Like, That's what I can do with that 20 Gs. <laughs> okay, I can do with that. You know, I know what I'll do with that. And the point she was making was she's dated Nigerian men, men that were born mm-hmm. back home and raised back home. And she's dated American guys. And they're not frugal with their money. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, bear in mind, she's dated guys that have money, first of all, because I know for a fact, men that don't have money, it's them that's going to be pressed to spend it. Exactly. What, now, what are they supposed but to be spending? they've got yeah. money, mm-hmm. most guys that have actually have real money, this is my opinion, and I don't care how, what people think, guys that actually have money, no matter where they're from, they don't care. They'll spend their peas. Because that's where their ego comes from. Like, yeah, I, can, I got this. I can... <laughs> now, men... In Nigeria, they're raised to be providers. So mm-hmm. your status as a man derives from how much you can provide. Yeah. yeah. So if so that's why, in my experience, men from Nigeria, born and bred, um, raised within that culture, when they date women, you I don't know how much things cost. I don't know how much things cost. I go, mm-hmm. go out they buy everything everything is on them to the point where you even offer they get offended because it's like do you think i'm not man enough to handle the yeah handle yeah the <laughs> so i've not dated american guys so i don't know if they do, if they spend peas like the nigerians do but i know for a fact mm-hmm. that them fresh nigerians they're not letting you spend anything as a woman they believe that they mm-hmm. should be providing it whereas in comparison to uk nigerian guys donnies it's very it should be 50 50 i don't, I don't know about the 50 50 well. or, or they're pressed to spend the money and hmm. I'm, I'm not gonna lie yeah as much as i'm not a materialistic girl if a man's coming to me with that energy it's just making me think oh so you're broke because if you wasn't broke and money wasn't a thing for you you wouldn't care you would spend the money but is there anything wrong with man caring about his, i mean like or is there anything wrong with man being broke if he's like you know what i mean not he's not homeless but he's just just not got it like that. Is that is no, there No, for me personally, if you've not got it like that, I can help you I can I can help you to make sure you've got it like that, basically. Yeah. If you're in if you're ambitious and you're you're willing to work hard and you want to level up, mm. baby, let me help you level up. Do you understand? But 
there's a difference between a man like that and a man who is happy and fine and comfortable being in a place and where he's, he's not yeah and then he wants to put his two pence in because that's all he's got and then be t- trying to say men shouldn't spend money women are gold diggers they don't. no one's digging for anything with you because there's nothing there but that's <laughs> The you mind is already. Saying? So I'm just, <laughs> I just feel like men that are pressed for peas are the ones that are more like, ah, oh, my money, my money. If if you've got it, you wouldn't feel any way. There's women that spend money on men. If a woman likes you, likes you, mm-hmm. she will spend her peas. Oh, that's for sure. I have been there. <sighs> it's embarrassing. I've been there. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. <laughs> you know, I don't know but what it's I've like from it. the woman's. I've I don't know what it's it. like from the woman's mm-hmm. opinion, I've but done I've it. been there. I've done. I've done that was Planned interesting. Planned a whole birthday, did a whole, like, spent peas on you, baby. Mm. Like, the most, I mean, if, I, if uh, this is like not, you this, enough, we'll yeah. do it. You see? This is not the most that has been spent on me, but circumstantially, it was like the most because of, like, what the situation was, etc. Yeah. But one time, some girl bought me trainers. Okay. Or I say some girl, she was a woman. I was the boy, she was a woman. Okay. But I was like, no one's ever done that for me before. <laughs> like, some fly ass trainers or that. Back to the to the grace thing, right? With this spending money. Well, well you said 50-50. 50-50 to me is not a vibe. If, if a woman is coming on really strong about her position and her independence and da-da-da, and thus on this date she must pay her way or whatever, then fair enough. Mm. I'm not trying to offend people's beliefs, but like, Generally speaking, no, that's not how I operate okay. in a single realm. I mean, I guess now me and my fiance, we actually just put stuff in the joint account and then pay for stuff from the joint account. Yeah. I treat it from time to time, but it's different. Mm-hmm. It becomes different. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't feel like any material gains can ever balance against a broken heart and distrust and someone cheating on you. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think you can... You know what I mean? I don't think, regardless, even if this person took you on a yacht and blah, 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 what is the, they've just wasted your time. That's what they've really I done. Mean, and I'll the cry, time you can't I'll get cry back. into my Chanel bag. <laughs> like, would you really enjoy the Chanel bag oh, knowing yeah. that? Like, no, but what action would a guy have to do for you to not enjoy that bag? For example, I'm going to enjoy my bag. Period. No matter what he did, no matter I mean, how embarrassing it was. No matter how embarrassed, even if he embarrassed you publicly, blah, blah, blah. I, I got my, that, it's not going to make me him. hate the bag. Hmm. I hate him. Okay. I hate him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the bag is my bag. <laughs> the bag <of> innocent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Do you see boy. what I'm saying? So I kind of I I get what she's saying, even though I'm not the kind of person, like, because I'm a, I'm a kind of person, if someone spends that kind of money on me, I start feeling indebted to them. It's kind of like, oh, God, now, oh. There's that as well, so man. So it's like, oh, God, oh now I got, oh man, oh. <laughs> um, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, gifts is not my first love language. It's like the last, like the bottom of the barrel for mm. me because it's like, once I receive that gift, in my mind I'm thinking, okay, he, it's not. There's an obligation. Well, now. because I know how a lot of men they they it's this, it's transactional. Mm-hmm. You've given me that bag. You want something, and I'm not. Yeah. Mm, it's so controversial, true dami zane fashion, but. It's a bit. It's a bit. Mm. Well, a bit prostitute. Yeah, thank you for saying it for me. I know you. I, I know where the vibe is. That's how I, I feel. Just if I was in a relationship <laughs> and my man bought me, if I was in a relationship and my man bought yeah. me a Chanel bag, that's different. He's my yeah, man. no, of course. Mm-hmm. But talking, just talking, just exclusive, or just date, yeah, dating, or yeah, and you buy Not me a Chanel big, big spending. Yeah, you buy me a it's... Chanel bag. In my mind, I think it's all, oh, God. Ah. <laughs> you know? So I got to give you the thing. Oh, <laughs> I don't have to give you anything. Mm. Because that's worth, that's 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 worth way more than a Chanel bag. Like, you can't put mm-hmm. a price on that. Mm. But it's it's still giving, you know, it just makes me uncomfortable. So personally, I'm not about that life. But if mm. I was in a relationship with a man, which I'm presuming is what she's talking about, I'm in a relationship with a man, he buys me a Chanel bag and then he cheats on me afterwards. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna be heartbroken, irrespective whether he bought me the bag or not. The heartbreak is gonna be the same, but it's just mm. that with the Chanel bag, I've got a Chanel bag now. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I hear you. But I, you know I what I mean? Like, just... you think about it. Like a girl, imagine you're in a relationship 
and I don't know, it could yeah, be PS5, PS5 or whatever, whatever yeah. it is that guys go crazy for, yeah. Buy yeah, your PS5, yeah. she cheats on you, you're heartbroken, but you're still as you're even gonna you're even gonna use that PS5 to help you escape Get over the, the heartbreak. Because <laughs> you're gonna play yeah, so, the PS5 so you don't think about the heartbreak. Literally, no? as soon as you flipped it to me, yeah, the first thing I thought was, ah, oh, so if it was a PS5, like how would that feel? I don't know, you know. Right now it's hard to get a PS5. Maybe when they become easier. Then I'll dash her one away and buy myself one. Do you know what I'm you saying? You got time. I, <laughs> I will take that Chanel know. bag and take it on another date. A few episodes ago. What episode? Uh-huh. Now, oh, God, I can't remember. I don't know, you know. Episode six, you know. Damn. Six. We took our time coming Jeez. back to this one. Yeah, boy. We covered um, relationships in London. Mm-hmm. Some comments were made. London is not an ideal place to try and find a partner. I'll just put that out there Why? just like that. Why? Why? <laughs> What's my reasons? Okay. Um, I think that women in London are spoilt for choice. In fact, ruined for choice. To the point where they have so much that most of them end up with nothing because they have too much choice. Venom Soundbite had the comments going off on Instagram. Going hey guys. off. And we had a lot of girls, a lot of women, not girls, grown women, backing mm-hmm. me that he's capping. 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 Please. Capping. Please. Massive capping. Okay. Mm-mm. Um, and we thought we need to we need to unpick this because some valid comments were made. There was a lot of good comments. And in we there. need to we need to unpick it in detail because it was a flyaway comment in that episode, wasn't it? We didn't really Yeah, it was just a sec- wasn't it wasn't purpose. meant to Yeah, it wasn't it meant to be it wasn't the purpose but a lot of the conversation. Of... But today we're gonna talk about it. So, Venom, today mm-hmm. we wanna unpick, I want to unpick this notion that men in the UK, in London, mm-hmm. seen as that was the yeah. original. The fact that there's so many of them and black women in, in London have so much choice that we're ruined. Ruined, you know? Ruined for ruined. choice. Okay. One of the comments was basically talking about how black men in London, or in the UK, mm. rather, mm-hmm. fetish... Uh, fetish... Oh, I, can't, I can't say this. Fetish... Fetishize. Thank you. I think it's fetishize. Thank you. Um... Or fetitious ass. Sorry. Thank no. you. Because <laughs> Definitely we, not we, all. The, the English is not English in today. Um, <laughs> white women or fairer skinned women um, and the basically dark skinned women are basically bottom barrel. We don't get the same attention. Mm-hmm. So what do you want to say about that then? Right. <clears throat> so my comments was that women in general in London are ruined for choice, spot for choice because there's yeah, it wasn't exclusive to black women, but we're definitely going to go into black women today to as well. Today to day. Today to day. And I don't mean literally go in because man's all taken on that, but conversationally, we're going to go in. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, hmm. <sighs> okay. So there's, there's, there's a lot of reasons why I made that comment. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pick up on some of them. I guess the first one, the, the very last reason is specifically to do with black women. So I'll make that one last, last. But I'll start with the, with the women generally reason. Just get on with it. <laughs> right. So, so, <laughs> so the first one, I guess, is the psychology. Because what I was saying is a lot of people, <clears throat> sorry, a lot of women, friend zone, guys who are fit for the task. Yeah. So there's the psychology of how women select men. A lot of women, and women need to break the psychology because a lot of women choose guys that other women find attractive. It's, it's a psychological fact. It's got a name, I can't remember it, but basically in, in certain things that like teach guys how to draw down girls, they express that if you can garner attention from some women, it just makes it easier to get attention from more women. You just have to show them the other women that find you attractive. So in doing that, girls are already going for guys that are like, not a finite resource, but guys that are already being sought after. And they're ignoring the guys that don't have a lot of female attention simply because they don't have a lot of female attention, but it doesn't make them less attractive. 
but women are naturally less attracted to them. You don't have to agree. It's the facts. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, so that's not helpful because that also doesn't give women the opportunity to get to know like the shy guys who don't have a lot of attention. That's just one whole area of, of why. I hear what, I, okay. I hear what you're saying. So basically mm -hmm. what you're trying to say is the less, um confident guys mm -hmm. outspoken guys guys that fit the typical aesthetic of what women generally go for they're the yeah. men you're advocating for basically when you say in this yeah women. right here right here right now mm -hmm. i hear it um and i did say something similar in that same episode i believe i said something towards the end when i was like um the toxic guys are not the ones that are going to settle down. It's the one that you probably keep as a friend that is you're going to mm -hmm. settle down with. So I guess we were saying the yeah. same sort of thing. Um, I do agree with you to an extent about that because sometimes, a lot of the time, um, good, really good guys are friend zoned. But I don't think that is necessarily the fault of the woman and down to what she chose. So, I mean, sometimes a guy might move to a girl, she might not be attracted to him and then she friend, friend zones him because she's not attracted to him. That yeah. could be because of how he looks, for example. And everyone's entitled to like what they like in terms of looks, okay? So I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna allow you to basically say that women shouldn't basically like what they like okay wait, wait so i'm gonna park that okay mm -hmm. but sometimes sometimes it's the guy the way he's moving in itself is not giving the girl like he's not giving the girl the vim like i've i've had guys who i didn't know were moving to me until it was too late so mm -hmm, i had friends mm -hmm. on them then it's like oh but yeah, i really like yeah. what, I was, uh, why didn't you tell me that then yeah, but that's not every man's character. Well, I, under I understand men, that. Men, men are supposed to be the ones who seek out the woman. That's what I believe. Yeah, they, they came seeking. Yeah, they came men, seeking. Men, No, they didn't because you didn't seek properly if I don't know that you're seeking me. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> yeah, but some guys are not overt. But, that's the but thing. But you have to be. You have to no, be. No, that's... You have being to over be. You can't, is a you specific can't, you can't, character you can't, trait. No, you can't be like, oh, I really like this girl and I'm going to come in on a friendship tip. Then she's going to friend zone you. I mean, not, not if you've got techers. Not if, not if you've got techers, but nah, yeah, I hate what you're saying. Nah, it's not a woman's nature to move. She's not going to... She's not gonna be like, oh, he he's coming to me as a friend and he's bare shy. Maybe he likes me. No, she she's gonna be like, oh, okay, we're friends. Now. I mean, all right, let me just before I even make a point on what you're saying, I'm just gonna make a general point just for all the ladies in the room. Yeah, if a guy approaches you out of or a thin air, saying like, oh, hey, you know, like you know, you read books, I read books. Yeah, he probably likes you. Think that he likes you first. Don't like just friend zone him and then find out later. If a guy's coming to you on some casual, casual tip out of thin air, he probably likes you. Because I, don't I think in terms of I don't disagree. friendship, I don't disagree. guys get all the satis guys get all their friendship satisfaction from their guys. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But if you're coming to talk to me, you need mm. to you need to come to me confident. Okay, I don't personally, and a lot of women are the same. We don't like, we don't really want a shy guy. You want a guy that's going to take the lead. You want a guy that's going to, do you know what I mean? So if mm -hmm. you move to me and you're being mad shy, you're not confident. What, how is that telling me as a woman that you can take the lead? I hear you. So I'm just okay, saying. So if you end up being my friend, you came to me as a friend, then you're my friend. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <Do you understand? laughs> Okay, so, but okay, so make your intentions so clear. Make your intentions mm -hmm. clear and and be confident. The fact that you even had the confidence to say hi, you and I've responded to you. Your foot is in the door, my guy. There's a difference between the bravado of it and genuine. Like, okay, I'm gonna make it clear that this is what I want. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. if the girl doesn't like you back, she doesn't like you back. There's gonna be somebody else who sees the qualities in you mm. and matches with you, and it's compatible, I and you guys hit off. There's also going to be women that just prefer that you're their friend because you're just not what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Fair enough. Some women, what they're looking for is questionable. 
and with maturity they soon learn that what you want is not necessarily what you need and you should actually go for what you need not what you want more time Mm -hmm. cool well that comes with maturity and this is why i'm saying that it's you can't really paint all women under one brush by saying we've got so many options because let me tell you for free yeah Mm. I've had guys who are shy come and talk to me and I do give them time of day and it's not even the fact that they're shy or not confident that even put me off them it could be something else Mm -hmm. it could be the way that they speak about women like I went on a date with someone and the way he was talking about women I was like rah this guy hates women why am I here do you understand like the way he was talking about (laughs) women I was like "Mm, are you sure you wanna (laughs) because the way I'm talking it's giving you're actually trying to it's giving women are the enemy of the world I don't know (laughs) Do you know what I mean? So, so, yeah. so a lot of the time, it's other things that makes you say, oh, actually, it's not that for me. So, mm-hmm. it's, so it's not good, in my opinion, to just paint everyone and be like, yeah, they, you know, they've they, they've got so many options because we actually don't. And this is a nice way to bring in the whole black women thing because, mm-hmm. oh, my my point in this whole thing is that actually men have a lot of choice. Men have so much choice. There are so yeah, many different types of women out there depending on what you're looking for. Now, let yeah. me go back to me. I feel like mm-hmm. there's not that many men who who are on the same wavelength as me. And I know a lot of other black women who feel the same way. They feel like, yeah. I'm ready to settle down. I want something serious. I want a commitment. But where are the men who want that? Even... Even my friends and like even my male friends, a lot of them say they want that, but the way they move and their behavior tells me actually you don't want that because if, if I was dating you, my guy, as my friend, I wouldn't like what you're doing. Yeah, you yeah, see yeah. what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's so easy to say, oh, women are ruined for choice. There's so many options out there, but where are they? That's why in the comments, so many women were like, mm, where? There was, there was we, bad, want, mm. we, we want serious men. We are serious women. We want serious men. We, where are they? And it's me. Like to a, there say, was bare comments. It's me but it was to say likes. to a woman like me mm-hmm. that oh, you know, the good women are snatched up. Are you trying to say that those of us that oh, are did snatched, I say that? That's what you said in one of the comments. Go back and read it. You said the good no. women are snatched up, and it's rude. <laughs> I'm just like, rah. I, I'm a good woman, okay? I'm a good woman. <laughs> and I'm not snatched up. Right. So everything within context, it must have been a reply to Sam anyway. Anyway, let me get let me get in there. I'll get in there. Okay. So, um, I think, yeah, that w- you did touch on a point though that I did want to make was that I know a lot of beautiful, single, available women who are not single by choice per se. They, they are looking for a man, but there's not a man available. So, so a different point that I wanted to make is, especially within London, mm. a lot of um, women and men, but it's a consequence of being within London. Mm. And a lot of people are uh, career driven. Yeah. Um, get the bag. Yada, yada, yada. So men are very much aware of these mentalities. Mm. And if a woman is presenting that she's like super career focused, that means if you're a man coming into her life, you're going to be number two. No one's going to sign up to be position number two. So there's that, which is a broad stroke, but one that people have to bear Before in you mind. Move on, just quickly as a mm-hmm. counter to, to that. But yeah, in, the yeah, same, yeah. in the same vein, these same men want someone that's going to bring something to the table. Of course, so, of course. So you want... <laughs> think about it. J- j- like, it's, no, it's right, such wait, a mind bleed. I know, I know. Yeah, for women. Because it's like, okay, you don't want someone that just wants to eat your money. You want someone mm-hmm. who's going to bring something to the table in all yeah. p- facets of your relationship, including yeah, financially. Yeah. So that means I do have to be um, career-driven to an extent. <laughs> just like what I'm saying. But at the same time, I, you want to say to me, I'm going to be second fiddle to, to the job. No. Not necessarily. Yeah, so Do you see what I, I mean? It's, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, this is why I'm saying men have more option because they, Oh no, no, a, we have a, way more options. The dating scene is very p- patriarchal. Men set mm. the tone. You're telling me you want me to bring something to the table, but you don't want me to be like, make it make sense, please. So I don't think, I don't think men care that much and I might, I might be wrong. And if anyone wants to jump in the comments and mm. give your opinion, please do. Yes, because please. I have never looked at or been interested in the wage slip of any girl that I've dated, regardless what she's doing. Yeah. And I can and I can even put that further to say like if you went to like all the McDonald's in the country, found the absolute baddest baddie who works there, mm. I can almost guarantee she'll have a boyfriend unless she doesn't want one. Simply because she's attractive and guys will go for what's attractive to them yeah. and if she ticks all the other boxes yeah. but her job is 
poorly paid, man's will come. Don't worry about it. Like you work at McDonald's, it's calm. Don't worry, I can ignore that. If you you're calm, mm. cool. That's the man mentality that I know men to have. That's definitely my personal mentality. But I know. So that's I why also I'm know like, men who want a woman who is equally ambitious. Yeah, no, no. I, I definitely. So they want a woman I, who's I'm attracted ambitious, to ambition. Who's gonna bring something to the table? They want someone. Yeah. Like, because a lot, of, especially a lot of these high flying, like the ten percenters. They're mm-hmm. very much like, okay, I've worked my ass off to get to this 10%. What have you done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to eat my peas. Yeah, no, of course. So you but... need to. Right. So, and let me just give you some context because I think what black men need to understand is black women, we have to fend for ourselves. We need mm-hmm. a security blanket. So we need to make sure we're making money because there's... No, because I don't doubt first that. First of all, we're not picked first. And second of all, if a man decides to leave us, what have we got left? And we've seen mm-hmm. our parents or our parents' parents live in a generation where without their husband, they had nothing. Mm. So it's a bit, it's cruel actually, in my opinion, to hold that against us if we decide to be ambitious and we decide to say, you know what? I'm going to make sure I have my own because I need to make sure I look after me because there's no guarantee that I'm going to be looked yeah, after. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Alex, uh- Right? Yeah. Cool. Sorry. I was Alex gonna say, uh, Alex. I'll explain what why I've said that and how it ties into the the final point, yeah. sort of my yeah to to make it whole because mm-hmm. it's because it's a round argument. It's not like individual things. Yeah, it's like yeah, of course separate pieces that all form Everything one comes big together. reason. Yeah. Yeah. So that the final piece to my perspective of this puzzle, right, is that there's a misalignment mm. where I guess um yeah. Every woman has their thing that they're, they're looking for, whether it be culturally or socially or whatever. But like, I guess it's more known that like where black women sit and what they want from a man. So they'd be like, oh, these are the red flags. And like, everyone will talk about it on socials, on Instagram, etc. These are the things that give me the ick everyone will talk about on socials. Yeah. But I think the main thing that black women miss the trick on is that black men already know that black women only date black men generally yeah so it's like a i'd say it's like a 90 percent split mm. maybe 10 percent might date outside 90 mm-hmm. percent only go for black men mm-hmm. so that means we already know your hand so we already know oh you need this you need that you need blah 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 blah, blah, blah. Mm. but actually you're only going to date me so if i so me existing mm. i'm already good enough not not realistically but i mean as in you're only going to select from me and there's no real way i'm going to lose you because you're not going to look anywhere else and this is why I said last week, real quick, mm-hmm. I touched on it and it needs to be another video. I said that black women stick by black men. Mm-hmm. We stick by you guys. And it's only yeah. because, it's only more recently that you're seeing more black women they outside of the black race. I think colorism, I spoke about this with one mate in this week actually, so funny. But I was saying that in America, we see a lot of black um, celebrities go for mm-hmm, mm-hmm. racially ambiguous women. When they start making money, they go for mm-hmm. people like Kim Kardashian, they or whatever. They go for like the, the the white ladies or the light 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 ladies or women that look they that like to dibble dabble in black culture, appropriate, but they're not really black, kind mm-hmm. of. Um, and I was saying over there the fight for black women to be appreciated by black black men is heavily tied to um slavery and the impact that had on on americans because in america in my opinion Mm -hmm. black americans are not as tied to their roots as we are here in the uk in the uk a lot of us know where we come from we know if we come from the caribbean or if we come from africa we know exactly what country we come from um we are british we're more first generation second generation right we're british but if you ask a British Nigerian, what are you? They're not going to say British. They're going to say Nigerian. Same with a Ghanaian, mm-hmm. same with a Congolese person, same with no matter where you, you understand what I'm saying? Jamaican, yeah. Trin- Trinidadian, St. Lucian. Like they'll say their home country is where they're from. Britain comes mm-hmm. second. And that's just how we are here in the UK. So it's a different mm-hmm. fight. But colorism, both here and there, is an issue. Mm-hmm. And it's... I. I, I don't want to say that... I don't want to absolve black women from it because I know when I was in school, primary school and beginning of secondary school, I definitely preferred the lighter persuasion. Do you know what I mean? Like the caramel guys. Mm-hmm, I was about mm-hmm, that yeah. life. 
And then as I got Everybody older, was. I started to appreciate the chocolates and the dark skin. Like, <laughs> mm, yes. Um, and I feel like... Can, it, can I just make a comment on that little part? Yeah, go on. When I was in school, yeah, I used to feel like I was so dark. And when I grew up, I felt like I wasn't dark enough. That's how much it's changed. Do you know, it's so funny because... No, not me. I've always felt like I was dark. And people be like, damn, you're not dark skinned. I'm, I'm dark skinned. Yeah, no, nah, I, I still, I'm, I'm definitely, like, no, you're not, I'm, I'm dark. I'm dark. Because I, I've experienced the dark skin struggles. Yeah, I've experienced so the dark trauma. I'm dark. I'm yeah. dark, yo. Like, <laughs> and I used to like those light skinned guys and they weren't checking for me because I was too dark. I wasn't light. Mm, mm, do you know mm, what I mean? I wasn't red, I'm not red yeah. boned. I wasn't, I wasn't even a fairer b- black. Do you know what I mean? Like those fair skin. Yeah, like a browning. I'm not, I wasn't, a, I mean, now people call me Browning. I'm not a Browning. I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm black. black. I'm dark. dark. <laughs> <laughs> the way you lot treated me, I'm dark skin. Listen, okay? I'm the same, you know. So, so yeah. So like, I'm not saying that black women haven't done it, but I think you're right in that black. As much as black women have done the colorism thing, that was short lived. By the time I got to year eight, year nine, I was looking at dark skin guys. Sorry, like. Mm-hmm. But I think with the other way around black men all the way through uni all the way like if we, even if it's only in the last five years on twitter that they, they've they stopped doing the whole bashing black women like okay your, yeah, yeah, your yeah. complexion yeah. online mm. and if if they like dark-skinned women there was a certain type of dark-skinned woman like you had to be like a naomi campbell all right yeah, yeah, what yeah. i mean so mm-hmm. still quite european features but dark skin. But on a dark skin. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of us dark skin women don't look like that. And mm. the issue is it's very triggering for black women, actually. Yeah, I think this is back to my point about black women only dating black men. Is black men definitely date outside their race. Like it's culturally acceptable, so they do it. And I think that the the whole thing about like colorism, where uh, white women or non black women and then light skinned women, etc., mm. where they benefit is because. I guess that middle, the middle ground itself is the ground of ambiguity where, you know, people could be Greek, Cypriot, da 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 like, you know what I mean? Mm. They can be from a lot of different places. So easily uh, a Cypriot person can find someone who's light skin, attractive, just thinking that they look similar to them, if you know what I mean, yeah, or their yeah, women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? So, so in that sense, that light skin girl may also find that guy um, attractive. So ultimately you get a little bit more mix in there. And because there's mixing, um, being a black man in that space, you're not exclusive. Like that light skinned girl, she might date you, but she might date that light skinned guy, that Greek guy, that Turkish guy, that white guy. Like you're not special anymore. So now mm. you are you have to fight for your own position. Mm. Black men don't have to do that with black women. So then that's why it's like a psychology thing whereby, okay, cool. I don't have to fight for them, for, for my position with this woman. So then almost my value of the value of my position with this woman is less, if you see what I mean. With a not, black woman? Not, your value's less. Yeah, but no, it's as in because they don't have to fight for that position because the black woman's not going to be attracted to and then start dating other men. If you see what That's I mean. That's such a backward and warped way of thinking. It's why, like, I just don't. I'm, I'm going to be very frank here. If you mm-hmm. know that black women are for you, then why aren't you lifting us up? No, of course. There's more, don't get me wrong. There's more and more black men that are, that are only like consciously only dating black women and saying no mm-hmm. i'm o- i only want a black woman and yeah we love you we love you so much <laughs> and lifting us up and we need that mm-hmm. like if you know that we are the ones that are there for you why are you moving like you're the prize it's it's, it's <laughs> crazy to me no but the thing is the thing is like that's the problem is black men are the prize like we've been sexualized for years. Black women have been sexualized for years. Yeah, I know, but not in the same way that Absolutely black men not. have been sexualized. And the funny thing is, we've been robbed. And that's, we've been, that's why. Let, let me go, my, let me do my little rant me, please. Because black women have been robbed, okay? They want our lips. They want our body. They want our hair. They want our fashion sense. They want our music. They want our men. But our own don't want us. They want everyone else to be, look, act like us, but they don't want mm-hmm. the originals. Do mm-hmm. you know how hurtful that is? Mm. So it's like we're the prize inadvertently. Yeah, we're yeah. We're what you want, but you don't want us. And then you turn around. That's why when you make comments like, we've got choice, we're ruined. That's why a lot of the women that were 
arguing with you Comment we're black yeah, yeah, women yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah. what choice do we have <laughs> like I, if you could find me the choices <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> we, we don't I'm have it we don't have it like we don't have it and the whole men are be- men having that mentality of where i'm the prize is so damaging like traditionally and naturally men are supposed to come looking for us fair enough they're meant to come and hunt for us like you know they we're the prey they're the predators that's how it's meant to be in a non-sexual yeah. um toxic way that's how it's supposed to be so that's why a lot of women mm. walk around thinking i'm the prize like yeah, <laughs> i get that but we're not we're su- we're not we're no one's a prize in it like get that out of your head do you see what i'm saying mm. but the idea that of men these days thinking they're the prize is what is in my opinion messing up the dating scene because oh no no it definitely has because i'm the prize i can pick whoever i want and what black men need to realize is you're only the prize to black women because other races they don't really give a shit about you the way we do facts Mm-mm. period and i don't care other people from other races come for me i don't give a i don't give a damn because i know what I'm, i know what i'm saying and i know what i'm saying yeah do you understand mm-hmm. we we love our men we love our people you lot need to start loving us back and raising us up high because i just mm. think it's ridiculous it definitely is the responsibility of black men but it's it's more than um it's more than like an overnight or it's more than uh one artist like it's, mm. it's a very complex task because the, because it's hard to show you what has been done mm. and like the divide because if you think about like let's say for example hollywood movies or that hollywood scene i, I i'll call it the scene because like i, I don't necessarily mean just films mm. but like the way um black men are sort of presented as as this uh sexual prize and like successful black man is like all of this that should be hailed and the sports stars are amazing and they're so cool and so funny yada 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 Mm. there isn't there isn't an equal thing that's done for black women so what it does is it makes a lot of people really attracted to and interested in and involved in black men yeah in a way that um that yeah like i say isn't experienced in the same way for black women so then because it's not reflected, mm. you kind of just get sucked into it or you can. And whenever they portray dark skinned black women mm. in on TV or anything like that, it's in a hyper masculine way. Yeah. And it's yeah, yeah. taught black women to do the whole to be strong. Like we've got to be strong and we've got to be fighters and, and you've fighters got to be and yeah. outspoken and Listen, a lot of us want soft life, you know. Like I don't I'm ugh, tired of fighting. I don't exactly. want to I don't want to be aggressive and have to speak for myself because no one wants to speak for me. I have to hold myself up mm, because mm. no one else wants to hold me. Like I want to lean on someone. I want to be soft. And yeah. because we've had to do that, it's then thrown in our faces because we've had to be strong. It's a vicious cycle. We have to be strong, yeah, yeah, independent yeah. and fight for ourselves and speak up for ourselves. And the more we do that, the more it fuels the idea that we are masculine and we are aggressive and we are loud and we are too outspoken. And, you know, mm-hmm. and, and then and then it's then used against us in that, oh, we want a softer woman. We want someone that's more feminine. We want someone that mm-hmm, is, mm-hmm. which is why... This this is the ideology behind why black women are not desirable because we've been we've been portrayed in a masculine light. So yeah. whereas white or lighter skinned women are portrayed as more feminine and more soft and more you know calm and dainty and mm, do you see what I'm saying? But black yeah, women yeah, haven't been yeah, given the opportunity to do that. And until black men, and I'm gonna put the responsibility on black men, until mm. black men start putting us in spaces that allows us to do that a safe space that allows us to do that we will continue mm. to have to speak for ourselves and fight for ourselves and be the strong wo- the strong woman that you lot don't want yeah it's a catch-22 it and catch it just 22. keeps going around in a, in a cycle yeah. because so with that being said yeah Mm-hmm. We've we've spoken about this not in as much detail as we would like to because otherwise this podcast would be so long. This episode this is about five long. hours. Yeah, five. <laughs> we want to keep, keep going. it. We want to keep it around the hour mark. But um, hearing some of the things that I said today, would you yeah. change your comments on op- around the fact that women have options that we're ruined for choice? Would you change your comments around that? Would I change them? I don't know if I'd still. I don't know if um. I don't know, you know. Reason being, 
This is another reason because it, I see that, that there is there are other forces at play, definitely, but um, I do feel like aside from some of the bigger agenda issues, there are some more localized things that don't help, which is me talking about like the ick stuff and the red flag stuff. But you when, do realize when, that all of that is not real. Let me tell you something. Whatever, no, no, no. I know it's not see, real. Whatever you see on Twitter or Instagram, yeah, is, yeah. Is, is actually crap. People chat no, rubbish I know, on I there, know, and in, in their know. real lives, they accept a lot of stuff that they say they're not accepting, or they like a lot of stuff that they say they don't like. It's all a mm-hmm. facade. No, That's I get why that. But over Christmas and New Year's, bare people were getting engaged, and then people were tweeting. Ra, I thought I thought we were saying that relationships is rubbish. I thought we were saying that things. <laughs> but this is what I mean. It's not real. This, it's not real. Yeah, but so you can't really but, use that as an example because all of no, 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 no. The reason why, fake. no, the, the reason why is yeah, but I think reality TV culture, which I would put that into, then is is very much more something that women are involved in per se more than men. I think like as a man, me personally, I take everything quite literally so when i read that kind of stuff i'm like rah boy these girls really ain't feeling men because of xyz whatever so it's rubbish Whereas so it's I, rubbish when it's about us but when it's when it's women talking about men it's not rubbish no but i am taking account of the stuff that women say about men i'm not paying attention to what men are saying about Why women when i'm not because you need because to pay i'm not contributing to, boys, to that co- to, yeah to but boys, i'm not sorry. contributing to uh that discussion so that's not like if it's not my opinion that i'm sharing then I'm not going to pay attention to what other men think of women because... But you're going to pay attention they're, to if what they're women right. are saying about men. Yeah, yeah, because... So how think does about that make sense? If you're not perspe- taking in both, then you're, you're... If you're not taking in both sides, then your opinion mm-hmm. is very biased. I feel like I've enlightened you or brought you you're into the mindset me. of how mm-hmm. black women... Because we're talking about black women here, Yeah. And how yeah. what we what we've experienced and you know what we go through, you're still gonna stand on your point that we are ruined for choice. Really, I still think that there's a lot of guys that are overlooked that are that are more right, than cool. qualified for right, the cool. for the job. I'm 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 so triggered. I don't even want to carry on. Cool. And I, oh, where can we find you? <laughs> you can find me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so I mean, I, just <laughs> I'm so, just give us your socials. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here there and everywhere. The name is Venom. That's me. Where can we find you? Okay. Uh you can find me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. Um I will put the um names that and how you can find us below and the links are in the description as well. Thank you so mm-hmm. much for listening guys. This is a conversation that will never end if we carry on so it's just best we leave it there. But I'll be so interested to hear your comments. Um you know, leave your comments down below of your of your thoughts about what we've spoken about today, both yes. from the um black well, anyone actually, not just black people, but um, man and woman's perspective um, I hope we've both been able to represent our demographic well enough in this conversation but I guess mm-hmm. I, I know you lot will tell us in the comments if you haven't <laughs> I yeah. trust and believe that um, if you enjoyed this conversation please do subscribe so you can hear more like this um, hopefully you like the realness of our conversations we try to keep it very real um, and yeah until next time guys Peace. Peace, love and chicken grease. <laughs>